guys how are you welcome this is the full moon in pisces lunar eclipse reading for all signs of the zodiac so it doesn't matter what your sign is it's a general reading for the collective for the full moon in pisces with it's actually i think a partial lunar eclipse but it is a super full moon also known as the harvest moon so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start by just pulling one or oracle card today from uh, Moonology Messages. I may read out of the guidebook too, just to kind of give us a full message. Here we go. Let's see what comes out for us. The moon's moment, synchronicity. The moon's moment. Let me see if I can find it. Yes. A little talking about synchronicity. Something is flowing in the right direction for you when this card comes up. Everything is either already falling into place or will do so very soon. Even if you fervently believe that you create your own reality, there are times when events have almost destined feel and this is one of those times you could perhaps attribute it to life unfolding and revealing the lessons our souls need to learn in this lifetime there is synchronicity at work you're exactly where you're meant to be learning the lessons you need to learn everything is lining up as it needs to so trust the process as much as you can stay optimistic for your desired outcome Whatever the situation you're asking about, know that it's not a random development in your life, but a step along your path and meant to teach you. The sooner you pay attention to the lessons, the sooner you'll be able to navigate your way to where you want to go. Additional meanings for this card, divine time is unfolding. Well, hallo freaking luya. Events now have a purpose. You're in the right place at the right time everything happens for a reason or there is a reason why everything happens yeah i love this the synchronicity card and so because we are in this full moon in pisces the harvest moon was always about timing right before there were calendars and such the agrarian world was based on the moon and the lunar cycles and eclipses featured very prominently they were auspicious um so i'm going to talk about that and then i'm going to jump into the tower reading so this is time stamped if you don't want to hear about this full moon then just jump ahead it's time stamped for your convenience um, it will peak at 10.34 p.m. this evening on the 17th, but if you're across the pond, then it's happening on the 18th. Uh, check your local listings. It is um, the final eclipse um, for this particular, final, final lunar eclipse uh, for the north node in Aries and the south node in Libra, um, which means every 18 months the nodes shift signs um, it's the nodes of the moon that create the eclipses anyway i don't want to get into the weeds about it but um the sun is in virgo and the full moon is opposite in pisces so our conscious awareness the sun in virgo is aligned with healing organizing process and integration getting all the moving parts into alignment how virgo of it uh virgo in the house right and in pisces we have the very opposite energy where the vast unconscious spreads out beneath our conscious experience and is the source of our spiritual connection which is kind of why I'm here doing what I'm doing, because in the Virgo sun mindset of, you know, kind of keeping all of our spiritual connection in alignment, right? That's sort of 
I always wondered, why can I do what I do? It, that's part of the polarity, um, zodiacally speaking. Um, so the full moon this time around happens to be conjunct Neptune, which is the ruling planet of Pisces. So when I say conjunct, it means the planets are kind of at the same point in the sky, holding hands. So this makes this a very dreamy passage, um, but make no mistake about it, this week feels anything but dreamy. There are a lot of dynamics with this full moon, making it a little less than dreamy. Consider that Saturn is presently in the sign of Pisces. So this is a serious and sobering full moon. And then add an eclipse onto that, you get the drift. So this is an eclipse season that we're now entering that is very connected to releasing the past because it's connected to the south node. The south node is about the past, the north node is about the future. I'm flipping my page here. The sun is hanging out there at the south node. So the last eclipse was a north node eclipse that was about moving forward in new ways. This one is more about releasing patterns from the past that no longer serve you. Um, and between this setup and the flood of Pisces energy, this full moon is more like psychic surgery to help us let go of the past because it's kind of happening in the below. And almost all the readings I did in this last series, if you've been watching, if you're brand new to the channel, hello, by the way, go check your most recent sun sign reading. Um, I did the soul contract readings to kind of see what remains to be healed before we do the psychic surgery. And by psychic surgery, I don't mean psychic clairvoyant, I mean psychic in this of, of the psyche. So we gotta let go of the past. That's gonna happen whether we like it or not. There are things that are gonna be dredged up from the past. It's probably already been happening for you. And I have kind of taken note in the comments. There have been many, many more than usual that I could not post, right? That I could not approve, which is a sign <laughs> that people be tripping because stuff's coming up. And when that happens, right? It's like we adults, we tantrum in a different way than a toddler does. It's ugly. It's profane. Um, it's very blamey and, you know. So those of us that go like, oh, snap, I got to I gotta fix it. I got to deal with this. I got to deal with this. I don't want to carry this forward. We're going to be okay. Those of us that are, you know, pitching fits and screaming and blaming and shaming everyone else out there, it's going to be a rougher ride going forward. Just going to say that. Call me names in the comments, I don't care. So what else is happening in this full moon is there's a grand trine. A trine is like a geometric triangle if you're looking at, you know, the, the astrological chart for this full moon. It, it forms a triangle, but it's a grand earth trine, meaning that the sun is in Virgo, Uranus, the planet of surprises, is in Taurus, Pluto, Lord of the Underworld, is in Capricorn. So there's this vortex of energy capable of initiating complete change and transformation right here in 3D, for reals. Okay, so we have, we have, we have Pluto, we have Uranus, um, together with the sun in that healing mansion of Virgo, that entire eclipse energy generates an almost perfect uh, kite formation, right? Because the moon is opposite the sun. Kites fly, my friends. Kites fly. So if we let this tumultuous time, right? Like think of a, trying to fly a kite on a really rip windy day out on the beach, okay? 
if we let this tumultuous time have its way with us and surrender to all that's really trying to break down to kind of serve us better, the rebirth to come will be nothing short of extraordinary. Because once that kite breaks through the rough wind and gets above it, do you know what that feels like? Or have you ever watched a video of a kid tangling with that and the exhilaration once they break through it? You know, it's, it, that's what I want you to get a visualization of. Okay. I mean, I'm literally tearing up because that is what the capacity is here for you. So if you never experienced it, maybe do some search of videos for kids flying kites and see if you can find one where the kid breaks through the rip wind and gets to the that moment, that joy, that nirvana. So this full moon is the moment when we drop the old wounds all around love. It's around love, got to tell you, so we can shoot forward into new love territory with the next lunar cycle kicked off by a new moon in Libra, which Libra is ruled by Venus and Venus herself is in Libra right now. So like I said, the rebirth to come will be nothing short of extraordinary. If you allow it to be, if you clear the path. Now, Venus has been dancing with Chiron, the great, the wounded healer in an opposition. That opposition peaks with this full moon. So you've heard me describe an opposition. Planets are opposite. It's like, you know, a rubber band. If you pull too hard at opposites, it's going to snap. So it's um, something that has to be reckoned with. Um, this one might hit you right where you are. So if you are in an ongoing healing experience in your relationship life and that has been painful for you, this is a moment of big change. Yeah. The choice to release the pain, to let it go, right? And if that's not your story, then this is a good time to take a serious sober inventory to make sure your heart feels deserving of what you wish to create in your life or create more of in your life, especially romantically speaking. So the energy of today for this full moon is not smooth. All full moons are intense and eclipses kind of, you know, amplify that. But we're going to talk about Jupiter here. You know, Jupiter wants to give us all good things, but Jupiter's in the mix and Jupiter is squaring the sun and squaring the moon. You know, you've heard me say a square is like where the wall meets the floor. It's immovable. So it's tough geometry. And you say, well, if Jupiter wants us to, you know, wants to give us all good things. How could that be so bad? Well, Jupiter does have a shadow effect. Its only shadow effect is too much excess extra over the top. <laughs> So since Jupiter expands everything it touches and it's hitting our conscious awareness, which is the sun and our unconscious mind or awareness, which is the moon in that conflict geometry, everything could be bigger and more over the top than it ought to be. So please do your best to keep everything right sized like not to go over dramatizing situations. Yeah, no mountains out of molehills. Yeah, it might be a bumpy full moon indeed. So expect a little stress and bluster. But now that you know better, you can do better. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give you a little mantra if you want to call it that. Pisces invented all that's invisible to us, so we can't always know what we're working with. That's why I love the high priestess and named the channel after her in a way. Um, but we don't need to know, right? Our rational minds aren't where the magic happens. Um, we're in a full moon, so 
we're releasing from the below. And uh, it's a full moon in Pisces, so the unconscious is what's really lit up anyway. And we're in a self node eclipse, so we know we're moving away from the past. And if you're in doubt about what to do, what to say, how to get out of your own way, here's what you can say. I hereby release any and all blocks and limitations known and unknown, conscious and unconscious, that inhibit my ability to release the past and move powerfully forward to live a masterful life. And so it is. Got it? Okay, so now that I have covered this most important full moon lunar eclipse, let's do a little tarot, shall we? Here we go. I'm gonna do the modified Celtic cross. Of course, I'll dive deeper in the extended where I go through all the zodiac, Aries through Pisces, and I do little mini spreads there. In the extended, if you already have the All Access Plus membership, you will not need to repurchase. You just need to go to moments.com and go into your membership to see it. Just want to remind you. I'm saying that now. If you've been enjoying this so far and you haven't already, please do subscribe below. That will help keep me here on this platform. All right, here we go for the full moon in Pisces. Ooh, yes, we're coming in with strength. That's our focus. What's the challenge to that five of wands? Yes, we're overcoming some challenges, maybe an outside source of interference of some kind, competition perhaps, an unconscious awareness, the Hierophant, Tapping into our higher selves. For some of us, this is around the theme of conventional committed relationships. Beautiful in the past, the Knight of Cups. That is Piscean energy, by the way. Um, the Knight of Cups can talk about romance. It could talk about an offer of love or maybe just the desire for somebody to come in and be more vulnerable. Conscious awareness, the chariot. Yes, making progress, moving forward, a sense of victory. Boom, there we have it. The devil in the near future. Looking at how we negotiate fears, insecurities. Um, the devil to me, because of based on everything I'm seeing here, at this point, I'll know more with the clarifiers, is coming in as egoic fear and resistance. So let's not say much more about that till we clarify. Strength card, by the way, the only card in the deck that overcomes the devil is the strength card. So I love that we open up with the strength card and we already know that what's challenging it is some kind of chaos, conflict, um, something that may be interfering in our connection and then in the near future, we may need to meet it head on, whether that's in, within ourselves or um, as an obstacle in the, in the relationship. Okay, so strength card, five of wands, king of pentacles, tower, nine of pentacles, so there's been some kind of, I'm going to call it as some form, something came between you and your person. You're trying to overcome it now. Maybe, maybe regain your sense of confidence. Oh, I love how I'm holding this up. One half of her face is a woman kind of Goldie Hawn or um, her daughter, what's her name again, Kate, um, kind of looks like her. And then the other side is the lion's face, really fabulous deck, by the way, late Sears Tara, you know, and this is the challenge. This is what's crossing you, but this King of Pentacles, somebody you thought you could count on, the masculine archetype of a life partner, 
who you're moving through life with, but, but it gets ripped out from under your feet and there's the Nine of Pentacles where you're finding yourself alone on your own. She's a single person in the tarot. And she can also be representing you needing to kind of get your confidence back. Um, something really shook you up here or has you feeling shaken. It has shaken your confidence. You didn't, you know, didn't expect it. Let's see the Hierophant, please. So I am thinking this Hierophant is more about the conventional committed relationship because we have a King of Pentacles. And now in your unconscious awareness, so roaming around in your psyche, remember we are looking at this full moon in Pisces with an eclipse. And I told you Pluto's making uh, an appearance in that trine, in that kite formation. This is Pluto, judgment. Uh, we have Uranus in the sign of Taurus, right? I told you that. And the Hierophant is there. Uh, this is Taurus. It's associated with the sign of Taurus. So I'm having some of the energies come through. Judgment is about reunion or reconciliation, second chances. There's the happily ever after card. But yeah, no, what you're processing is I have been rejected, abandoned, shut out disavowed, devalued. So this is what is kind of coming up from the below. To be healed, to be reckoned with, to be um, faced head on so it can be purged, released. Whew. Knight of Cups in the past. Strength card, Four of Wands, Hierophant. This was Prince Charming. Absolutely Prince Charming. Romeo. I feel like you overcame a lot within your own vulnerability to even like it's it was everything maybe you both overcame a lot that strength card there almost like you supported each other you helped each other you received this person you saw the beginnings of something more committed that was then something's not not cool in River City, though. Let's see the chariot in your conscious awareness. You're trying to manifest a picking up of the pace, right? I want to come through this victoriously. I want things to move faster because they're not. We are moving at a snail's pace here. The Knight of Pentacles, and I'm saying that because I can see this card here, the Six of Cups, past life soulmate. This is my person. It's like we belong together. I know this to be a fact, but things are moving so, so very slowly, if at all. Sometimes that Knight of Pentacles often feels like it's stalled out energy. I know that tends to be more from the hanged man's point of view, but very similar dynamics. Uh, the knights are the ones that make offers though so that's why I feel like it's the knight that comes on the chariot it's almost like I can feel you saying because of the five of wands it's like hurry up hurry up we got this we can do this move faster and you're man you're calling it in it's what you probably set in motion back on the new moon in Virgo knight of Pentacles is Virgo energy so I am feeling this like I can tell that in your conscious awareness it's like a like you've got the the stopwatch going and you're coaching this person in and then we've got devil energy in the near future the 
There's the hangman. Okay. <laughs> There's this, this message that I see in the near future, which is almost like you see in this particular deck, the devil has, first of all, God bless her, um, Chris Ann, did an absolute like, amazing job with capturing what I think is the true essence of the card, which is like, the devil be hot. You know, the devil's always kind of like, come on, Laura, come on, walk on the wild side, girl, come on. Uh, let your hair down. Don't be so uptight, Laura. You know, there's like this part of the devil that's really kind of calling us in. It's like a trap, though. That's what I'm seeing here. He's got like a puppet on a string, and that puppet is our soul. You know? But there's... It's like we got a plan for that. We've got some healing that's what I think is happening in the near future. It's like, no, no, no. Take a good look. This is Neptune, the hanged man. Look over what it is that's being dredged up. This is what's being dredged up. And remember that I said that we have some players. What are the players? I want to tell you the players again. I have my notes. We have... Um, Pluto, which I said we have right here, in Capricorn. Well, the devil is associated with the sign of Capricorn. So we already have that Plutonian from the depths of the underbelly. And here we have the star, very much about healing. And Neptune here saying, take a good look. Take a good look into the underbelly because that's what we're healing here. And then we can bring in the peace, the reconciliation, which is what it is that you are conjuring in your unconscious awareness, the reconciliation of whatever breach of commitment or whatever conflict you're working through, whatever massive disappointment or rejection or devaluing that you feel you received at the hand of this person, you can release it, you can, you can heal it first, then release. You can reconcile it if you choose, because it is a choice. Mm -hmm. So the devil really isn't the person. The devil isn't really even you. The devil is the gunk. And it's calling us to kind of stay in it. But we have the opportunity to kind of heal it and then make peace. We have the opportunity to look at it and examine it from a safe vantage point. That's Neptune. Yeah. And then we choose. Do we want to reconcile it? Or do we want to claim the V, the victory, the W, the win, and move on? It will be different for all of you because it's a general reading. So that's what I have for you for now. I am going to take this to the extended, like I said, where I use just the overall energy from this reading and of course the astrology for the full moon and i go through each sign um, mini spreads of course and so the link to that is below and as i said if you are in the all access pass it's already yours just go to your account and you can access it there you don't need to purchase anything that's what i have full moon blessings for all yeah, white knuckle your way through it. It's a little bumpy, but all the joy and all the beauty and all the blessings are on the other side. I'll see you there. Bye for now.